This assault against free speech in the UK is really quite sinister and I've got to say effective. Of course, it's not going to silence the likes of Elon Musk, but the average person may uh, refrain from posting something on their Facebook page. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we'll be checking out a video titled A Sick Individual, Douglas Murray It's Back at Asta Campbell. Wow. I believe this is going to be another interesting one. <laughs> As we all know, Douglas always uh, say the truth, always stand by the truth. And a lot of people have been trying to attack him recently all because of he always stands by what he believes is right. Wow. So let's check it out. Go. Joining me now is author of international bestsellers, including The War on the West and The Strange Death of Europe, one of the finest thinkers of his generation, Douglas Murray. And Douglas, you are right now under attack. The left in the UK are trying to cancel you. They want you banned from TV appearances. They want you to uh, stop writing for publications like The Spectator. But it hasn't stopped there. Led by the likes of Alastair Campbell, he's a supposed former journalist turned uh, Tony Blair spokesperson, new Labor spokesperson. He and others are wanting you arrested and charged for offensive commentary, uh, also known as telling the truth. What is going on in the UK? And do you fear that police are scrutinising your tweets and interviews and things you've written? Well, um, all that uh, caused this was the fact that I've used my eyes uh, uh, in recent decades, and I've also used uh, my pen. Uh, and I have described what has happened to my country of birth, Great Britain, and the continent of Europe, and indeed the wider developed world and the challenges that come through illegal and legal mass migration. That's not all migration, but illegal and legal mass migration. Uh, interestingly enough, um, this this uh, interview that seems to have caused this breakdown from Alistair Campbell uh, was one in which I simply said what uh, I describe in the strange death of Europe as happening is indeed what is now happening. And I said this, mm. as many people have noted, not in a spirit of glee, but in one of deep lamentation. I never wanted to be proved right on this, and it gives me absolutely no joy to have been proven right that the importing of very large numbers of people illegally and legally from very different cultures into a society which totally fails to integrate them will lead to massive problems, including at some point a massive backlash. Now, it's interesting that Alistair Campbell should have been one of the ones to uh, uh, try to start this pile on. Of course, Alistair Campbell was part of the Labour government that in the late 90s and early 2000s massively ramped up illegal and legal migration into the UK. He's actually one of the architects of this problem, a problem which one of his colleagues at the time described as being deliberate. See, he, one of his colleagues said he came out of meetings about this, this issue with a very clear feeling that the Labour government of Tony Blair wanted this mass movement of people into the UK to, quote, rub the right's nose in diversity. Well, of course, all these things had unexpected consequences. But Alistair Campbell is one of the people responsible for them. I'm only responsible for pointing out the facts and the lamentable situation that he got our country into. There's a couple of other things very quickly, Rita. Of course, this man, Campbell, is best known uh, for uh, his lying dossier about WMD in Iraq, mm. which helped bounce Britain and other countries into the Iraq war. So if he had any kind of sense of decency, he would have disappeared from public life a long time ago. He was also, of course, the person who hounded Dr. David Kelly to suicide. And that's one of the really interesting things about Alistair Campbell. He's an unbelievable bully and a hack. And one of the mm. things about him, like most hacks and bullies of his kind, he thinks that he can hide behind, as he always does, the claim that he himself is very mentally fragile. One of the interesting things about that is he can chase people like David Kelly to suicide. But if you criticize Alistair Campbell for his frequent bursts of utter insanity, he says that you are using his mental health against him. He's a totally sick individual on every possible level. I make no apology for pointing out the terrible things that he and his friends did to my country. 
Well, your greatest crime appears to be that you were right. You wrote about this years ago. You warned about what was going to happen in, in the strange death of Europe. You were right when you warned of the unrest that would come in, uh, in books like The Madness of Crowds and The War Against the West. And as the great Thomas Sowell wrote, people will forgive you for being wrong, but they will never forgive you for being right. And... Uh, and what you talked about, that mass migration, we've got that discussion happening right here in Australia. We've had record numbers coming in legally. But if they're not assimilating, if they don't share your values, as we've seen in the UK, you're going to have these problems and just trying to stomp it out with two-tier policing and a justice system, Douglas, isn't going to solve the underlying issue. No, absolutely not. I mean, uh, as I've said for many years, the uh, the mass movement of people often who dislike the culture they're moving into intensely, and that always amazes me. I don't understand why people would move to societies that they dislike very much, but large numbers of people do, mainly just because they want to be in a system which can reward them at least to some extent financially, either through welfare or through the economy that, uh, that works far better than the countries that they fled from. Uh, but if you if you if you bring people from very strong cultures with very strong ethnic identities and religious identities into countries that are completely apologetic, kowtowed, self-shamed and embarrassed about their past, uh, as is the story that has been pushed on the people of Australia in recent years, as has been the story pushed on the people of Britain, Europe and America in recent years, you don't have a hope of integrating people. So, yes, all of this stuff is it, it, it is absolutely predictable. It doesn't require a profit. It just requires people with their eyes open and a willingness to tell the truth. And I hope that people do have their eyes open and continue to tell the truth, as I will. And I'm not going to be intimidated by any of these people who should have so much guilt on their consciences. I would be surprised that they dare to show their faces in public again. Now, along with yourself, the other great enemy of the left right now appears to be uh, Elon Musk, particularly amongst the political media activist class. Uh, look at this deranged piece in The Guardian, where else? With the headline, you know who else should be on trial for the UK's far-right riots? Elon Musk. That, that was the headline, and the piece goes on to call Musk one of the world's most prolific enemies of truth. This assault against free speech in the UK is really quite sinister and I've got to say effective. Of course, it's not going to silence the likes of Elon Musk, but the average person may uh, refrain from posting something on their Facebook page when they see people being arrested yes. for online posts uh, for things that are considered offensive, not just threatening or abusive, but just uh, offensive It seems to be a line that you can't cross. Yeah, absolutely, including retweeting videos of things that have happened. Uh, the interesting thing about Jonathan mm. Friedland of The Guardian, he's a very obscure figure. He's not at all known outside of a small amount of the, the left wing in the UK. Um, but, of course, to, the think, to think that somebody like him would have the audacity to claim that the British authorities should arrest an American citizen... I mean, I don't know if Jonathan Friedland knows his history. I assume he does. He's a relatively intelligent man. Um, but he should know that America... Uh, fought quite a significant war in order that American citizens would not, in fact, be under the writ of British law. And thank goodness Elon Musk isn't, and thank goodness he has the guts to continue, like a number of the rest of us, to say what is the truth. Uh, the interesting thing, by the way, about uh, two things to say about Jonathan Friedland in this ridiculous piece. One is that Jonathan Friedland, actually, uh, after noticing the success of the Da Vinci Code and other sort of uh, rather low, bo low boilerplate novels, started writing novels himself under a pseudonym. Him. And one of them published in 2017 is an extended wet dream about the idea of the assassination of President Trump. It's extremely open. That's the only skill of the book, such as it is, is that it's an excitable book for people who would have loved to see Donald Trump getting assassinated. On that principle, of course, in perhaps the American authorities ought to ask for the extradition of Jonathan Friedland yeah. for writing a crappy uh, uh, genre novel under a pseudonym uh, in which he uh, dreams of the assassination of President Trump. Of course, it would be ridiculous to do so because nobody would read his book. Uh, but the other thing to be said about the, the people 
uh, is that they just have this totalitarian authoritarian instinct which they just can't get rid of they think everything should always go their way they think they should be the censors of the town square and the reason why you see uh, so much of the media running against elon musk at the moment is that they recognize that his platform twitter is beating all of them or most of them in all of the stakes, mm. the media absorption around the world. And that's very scary for some of these old media who can't keep up and don't have very many readers like The Guardian. But, you know, it is a very important thing you mentioned there, Rita, that in actual fact, and Rowan Atkinson, no less, said this in a, in a speech 11 years ago, it's perfectly possible, you see, that people like me, uh, um, billionaires like Elon Musk, uh, we'll be able to get through this era and we'll survive it. And I certainly plan to, and I'm sure and know that Musk does as well. But what about, as you say, uh, the person who does not have the platform that I have or the means that Elon Musk has? What about them when, as is happening all the time at the moment in the UK, police forces that have not solved one burglary, yes, you heard that right, not one burglary in recent years, mm -hmm. are knocking on people's doors and arresting them for Facebook posts, for retweeting things. Sure, there are some people who've said some horrible things and disgraceful things in recent weeks, but oh my, the priorities of the British police. Uh, you know, they, uh, they are really treading into very, very dangerous Orwellian waters. I, it turns out, and the rest of the public in Britain can't trust them to solve a burglary. Would I trust them to police my speech? No, I don't think so. No, no. And the uh, treatment you're receiving, the treatment Elon Musk is receiving is what Donald Trump has been uh, copying for some years now. And his two hour chat with Elon Musk had uh, a lot of the media triggered. Uh, it did reach an enormous audience despite having technical issues at the at the start. But look at some of the media coverage we were treated to. This is from USA Today. Starts with this line, for a fascism curious billionaire who loves cuddling up to right wing loons. I mean, and it got progressively worse from, the, from there, Douglas. Trump's called the media the enemy of the people. And sadly, it seems there are many in the industry who seem desperate to live up to that tag. I mean, for, the, these are just dying uh, entities. I mean, USA Today is such a failing newspaper. It's as, it's as thin as a, as a loo roll. And uh, uh, it's just an unbelievable rag now. I mean, almost no information in it unless you want to follow the baseball, which lots of people do. But in terms of news, it's just the worst possible way to absorb news. Uh, but they, they just have an agenda and they just show it more and more. They describe Elon Musk mm. as a fascist. They describe the former president of the United States, maybe the next president, as just a just a right wing loon. And you know these these people, you can just you can write their headlines and their articles before the event occurs. And I'm sure some of these people do. I bet that guy decided to do that. And uh, you know, of course, they don't point out that it seems whatever your criticisms of Donald Trump, he did this very lengthy conversation with Elon Musk. It's rather more than we've seen from Kamala Harris uh, in uh, recent weeks. Mm. But, of course, they don't uh, mention that. They don't note that because it's just the backing chorus of the Democratic Party. That's all these, these, these dying media brands are. The public can see it for what it's worth. And if you want a little bit of dying left-wing media commentary with your baseball results, I suppose you can go to USA Today. But it turns out most of the world is going to X Twitter. Well, the, the the reach of that interview is astonishing, unlike really anything you see elsewhere. Now, I want to, before you go, play you a little clip from the Stephen Colbert show featuring CNN anchor Caitlin Collins. Uh, what is uh, curious here or, uh, well, pleasing is the crowd reaction when Colbert makes this claim. I know you guys are objective over there, that you just report the news as it is. <laughs> oh, I know. CNN makes it. I know. Is that supposed to be a laugh line? I wasn't supposed to be, but uh, I guess it is. Um... Douglas, even his leftist crowd just burst out laughing at that claim that CNN just reports the news. They're just straight down the line, unbiased. And this 
diminishing trust in institutions, including the media, the police we've spoken about, and uh, ju judiciary increasingly. It's not healthy, but I think in a way it is healthy that people are actually getting awareness of some of the double standards that exist. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this institutional distrust is, as I said to you before, Rita, we've discussed this, it's about the fact the public can see through these institutions. If a police force doesn't mm. solve burglary, doesn't even go to the scene of a crime, but it does go for a Twitter X post, you know there's a problem of priorities in, in the police force. Likewise, in the media, uh, uh, when you see the coverage of things like CNN, it's not just that it's biased in its stance, not everything, by the way. Occasionally, there's something on CNN that's relatively good and relatively impartial but the thing is but what they actually choose what they what what gives it away time and again is what they choose to focus on um they choose to focus on things that boost the narrative that they have whether that's foreign policy whether it's you with the war in ukraine or the war in israel and gaza or whether it's things domestically whether it's just puffing up their candidate to get her into office uh, in november and I was delighted to see that. I mean, I don't, I, I just can't watch Stephen Colbert most of the time. Almost nobody does. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, he started off as a comedian. Now he's just become one of these sermonizers, boring sermonizers of the American left in what used to be late night comedy slots. Uh, but it was wonderful to see that his audience was wiser than he was and knew more than he did and laughed in the face of the idea that CNN simply attempts to report the truth. Uh, it was it was the best moment of the whole interview uh, and unintentionally funny. Uh, Douglas Murray, thank you so much for your time this evening. Great pleasure as always. Thank you. Wow. wow. What an interesting uh, conversation uh, with Douglas Murray. And we can all tell Douglas is someone that is very articulated, always stand by the truth, and he always said the truth is not afraid to say the truth. And believe me, whenever I get the time to uh, listen to him, I always uh, learn one or two just by listening to him. And because of, he always stand by what he believe is, is the truth. A lot of people have been attacking him recently. And we all understand Douglas always uh, stand by his words, just like what we have seen uh, in this interview just by what Douglas said, that people are easily forgiven when they do something that is wrong and they are they apologize, they can be forgiven. But when someone is saying the truth, uh, they find it very difficult to forgive the person because what the person is saying is, is the truth. And we all understand Douglas always talk about uh, mass immigration, about legal and illegal immigrants coming into the UK which is what he have said in most of uh, his books, that, uh, that people coming into a country and failing to integrate and at the end of the day causing harm to the host country is a very uh, big problem. It's a very big problem. I understand they are totally against Douglas because of the truth you always stand by, because you always talk about the things that no one wants to talk about, just like what is happening currently uh, in the in the in the UK is what Douglas have been talking about more than ten or fifteen years ago, and that is what is happening currently in the UK. And I believe if they take Douglas seriously, they would have been able to address those issues. And I see no reason why someone should come into a country and try to force uh, the people to accept his own, uh, uh, his own culture, his own belief, and fail to accept the host country culture, the host country tradition, the host country value system. Because I, for one, I believe uh, UK as a country has its own identity. The British people has their own identity, and the identity is rooted in their culture, is rooted uh, in their believe is rooted in their value system so immigrants coming into a country can bring a lot of economic value to the host country if they are ready to integrate uh effectively they can bring a lot of benefit to the host country because there are a lot of jobs that they can 
fill into those jobs and they be able to do those jobs perfectly well. And in the long run, they can help boost the economy. But when they fail to uh, integrate effectively, they can also cause a lot of harm to the host country. We can all tell by the recent happening in the UK how the right wing uh, protesters try to address their grievance in a violent way. And at the end of the day, they end up, you know, destroying a lot of properties. And I believe it's all because of there are a lot of things they have been accepting for long and they decide to, you know, express their grievance in a violent way, which I believe is not the right way to go about things. So I believe people coming into a country should be able to, you know, accept the host country culture, accept the host country tradition in order to be able to integrate effectively. And Douglas always says something that you have no right not to be offended. You living in a society where there are two or three or more people living together with you, probably someone is going to say something to, to, get, to get on your nerves. Someone is going to say something to offend you. And when you feel offended, you don't have to approach it in a violent way. There are better ways of addressing those issues. If you are not okay with what someone said, you can either confront the person with a dialogue and you don't try to express yourself to the person and make the person reason with you instead of you approaching it in a violent way. And a lot of attack have been going on on free speech, which is what we have seen uh, in this video. A lot of people have been attacking Douglas all because he's saying what he believes is right. Even a lot of people have been arrested and jailed just because of their comments on Twitter, on social media. And I believe there are a lot of things to to address. Even the case of uh, Elon Musk, you see right now they are attacking Elon Musk all because he's trying to express himself, uh, trying to express his freedom of speech by what he believes is right. So I believe this issue should be uh, taken into consideration. I've really learned a lot just by the fact and by the point Douglas have stated in this video. i also love to hear your comment regarding the facts. Let's get the conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.